I'm going to talk about the settings you need for off the hot shoe flash. It is quite a straightforward process as long as you follow a certain few rules. So in terms of the dial, we need to be able to, on the camera, we go to manual because we need to be able to lock off our settings. We can't have them change, you know, when you're, you're metering on different brightnesses. So we need to lock off those settings because we're working with flash. So in manual mode, I use an aperture of around about f8, but you can use 5.6 or f4 because we're dealing with portraits. We want a shallower depth of field. The reason why I'm starting with f8 is because it's kind of a middle aperture, so it's a nice sort of depth of field amount. But the shallower the depth of field, obviously you go lower on the f number, so f4 is going to produce a shallower depth of field than f8. So we've locked off the f number. The shutter speed. Now shutter speed doesn't have an impact on the flash brightness. What it has an impact on is ambient brightness. However, we can't just choose random shutter speeds. We have to bear in mind that we can't go faster than 2 50th of a second with strobe lights. Uh, you, can, you can go slower and that uh, pulls in more of the brightness of the background. However, you can't go faster. I tend to put mine on 125 or 2 50th or 200th of a second. So generally, I start with 125. So I've locked off the aperture, I've locked off the shutter speed. My ISO, I start with 100. Just because it's better to start lower, it's better quality, and then you can always creep up if you need. ISO, the impact that has on the image, is like a volume dial. It'll increase the brightness of the ambient light as well as the flashlight. So just to bear that in mind, if I increase that, I'm increasing the overall brightness of both background, ambient light and flashlight. The flash power I have to manual as well and I tend to start with it on quarter of a power. The reason being again it's a middle power so I can go up or I can go down but there's a nice middle amount. You don't tend to need it on full power much unless you're in very bright sunshine because you're very close with the flash gun to the subject. It's normally about a metre or two metres away. You don't have it you know, further away than that. It needs to be effective on the actual subject. So often we don't need it that very full power unless we're in very intense sunshine. So the flash in manual mode, a quarter of a power, on your camera, ISO 100, F8 and 125 on the shutter speed. Start with those settings take a test shot if the flash is too bright you can reduce the power down on the flash or you could change the aperture now because i'd have to make my aperture uh, smaller increase the f number i don't want to do that because that will also increase depth of field so it's easier for me just to start by changing the flash power if my flash isn't bright enough then i need to increase the power of the flash or Again, make my aperture lower in the F number, so wider, and letting more light in, and that will let uh, the flash, more light flashlight in. So the way I control the settings, do a test shot, start with those basic or middle root settings, and then adjust from there. The ISO is like a volume dial, so everything will be brighter if you increase the ISO or everything will go darker if you reduce the ISO. So that will affect the intensity of the flash and ambient light. Now shutter speed, you can change that, but don't forget you can't go higher than that, that maximum amount because the, the flash and the shutter speed won't be in sync. And so what you'll get is banding on the picture. So the best thing to do is if you want to change the shutter speed, you can go slower. And what that will do is make the background brightness more uh, more brighter so it'll increase it if you go uh, faster on the shutter speed so if you're on 125 and you went up to 250th it will make the ambient light darker so shutter speed impacts the ambient light and it doesn't do anything to the flashlight so you need to decide when you analyze the picture is it the background light that's too dark or is it the flashlight that's too dark and then you adjust accordingly so to recap, if your flashlight is bright on the subject, you can reduce the power of the flash or you can make your aperture smaller. If your uh, 
ambient light is uh, too bright, you can make the shutter speed faster. But remember, you can't go over that 2 50th of a second and test with your flash because it might be lower on some flash guns. But say majority of the time it's 2 50th of a second, you can't go higher than that. So, and then you reverse it. So if your ambient light is too dark, you can go slower on your shutter speed. If your uh, both the flashlight and the ambient light is too dark, you increase the ISO because that's a volume dial for both. So it's quite straightforward. Start with these beginning settings and then tweak and adjust from there depending on the result you've got. The other thing I need to make sure uh, point out is to check the way the beam or the direction of the beam is hitting the subject. So I've got it pointing on the subject but I always go the other side of the subject just to make sure that that beam is hitting them and it's not going in in front or, or behind so that it's not covering them so you're actually getting a true even coverage of light on the actual subject itself so that's basically it that's a good starting point is set up those middle point aperture shutter speed ISO and flash power but remember manual on the flash gun and manual on your mode dial because you need to lock off those settings you can't have them adjusting in aperture priority or shutter speed priority they need to be locked off so that you you remain in control.